Hello everyone, this is Catherine Blackmore Burrell and today we're going to analyze and execute a small form in the form of a dewdrop, changing of color and showing slight movement. So we're going to start now with the starting of your thread going from the right side to the back side, coming back in and then a small back stitch and then bringing your needle up at the starting point at the top of the dewdrop at that point. And now we're going to do a series of long and short stitches. So here's your long stitch and very close the base of your second stitch which will be a short stitch. And I, you can see a slight fanning out of the stitches because the width of the form is now getting greater. So long stitch. See how the the stitches are now fanning a little bit more towards the edge, not too much. Always keep the angles very gradual and the fanning very gentle. Try to always come up on the line of your design as close as possible but not bunching in the same hole. And when you're right on the edge, try to bring your needle up at a slight angle underneath the last stitch so that you hide the beginning of that stitch. You see? And now we're going to do a short stitch here just inside the line. The next stitch will bring the needle up at a slight angle and then bring it in just inside the line so that you respect the curve of that outer edge. Once again, coming on the end working up another row. Here I'm going to do a small stitch because then my next stitch will come up underneath that last stitch at a slight angle. You see how the needle is coming up underneath and at an angle and now I'm going to place the length of that stitch along one inside the design. Now I'm going to come back and look at the care that I take to go between the stitches. The important thing here is to not have the same starting point nor the same finish. So there I'm really going deep into my stitches and coming out and changing the length of it so that I always have that irregularity. Once again the needle coming up really deep between the long and short stitches of the previous row. And you notice how it I coax the thread a little bit around the stitches that are already there. Can you see a small curvature? That's what you're looking for. Now I'm going to work on the other side of that central point. So I'm coming back to the start, not using the same hole as the first stitch, doing a short stitch or a shorter stitch, respecting the line of the design, a long stitch, and now I'm going to fan out towards that upper edge short long fanning out ever so gently no abrupt movements with your angles here really try to keep them very very gentle long stitch always varying the point of where I finish those long and short stitches so that I don't create a ridge short stitch respecting the upper line very close but not going in the same hole allowing for the thickness of your thread as well Long. now we're going to work a little bit up that line which means that we might give up some short stitches because the starting point is higher. Well, I just did a short stitch there, but that's preparing for up and coming back down. Going deep into the stitches.
Try not to split your stitches out. I always go between your long and short stitches of the previous row. I'm running short of thread here, so I'm probably going to fix my thread in the next stitch or after this stitch. Try not to go right to the very end. It's very hard to fix when you've got very little thread left in the needle. Taking great care not to split. And this will be my last stitch, and I'll fix coming up. Oh, one more. I'm doing the voiceover after the videoing, so here we go. Now we're fixing, cutting from the back, jumping over a thread and going to the back and coming up from the back. And now you cut off that excess. And that thread will be fixed by the stitches that will be embroidered subsequently. So you see I've already put a second color in and now I'm going to start with a third color. To, give, to show you how to, I've already fixed the pink thread, you can see the little back stitch there, and now I'm going to carry on the exercise exactly the same technique, going deep into your stitches and varying the point at which I finish them. Taking care not to split the stitch or the thread of the stitches of the previous row. Now it's very hard to see where the rows are and it doesn't really matter anymore. The whole idea about needle painting is you need to cover the ground fabric. So now you just place your, the next stitch where you see space that needs to be covered with color. And I try to work fairly rhythmically. Here I'm obviously just going to put the pink color in one side of that dewdrop, at this point anyway. So I'm going to work from left to right or right to left until I've put enough color in that section. Note also when you put in, when you start putting a second row of the same color, how the color deepens. And when you've only got one row, how the color merges with the previous color. So you've got a kind of a purple effect going on there with the red or the pink and the blue together. That will dissipate the more pink threads I put in. But the important thing here, you do have that blending effect. It's not a line, it's not a ridge, and that's why the starting point and the finishing point of all your stitches should be not in a line, but as irregular as possible. Looking carefully for my positioning. Going deep into the colors. Now as I approach the curve, I will coax, you see I've split there. Okay, coming back out without splitting the thread. Try again, there we go. Notice, notice how I coax the thread around the blue stitches so that you create that gentle movement. See how that starts to curve now? I'm very careful how I place it so that it really does sit with a kind of a gentle curve. Now I'm coming out from underneath that blue stitch at an angle with my needle to hide the start and come inside the design line. Allowing a little bit of space there for one more stitch to then come ahead and go inside the design line. There you go. You can see how the Additional pink is now deepening the, de de uh, the pink color because you've got more pink going in. The combination and the concentration of, of stitches makes it look deeper. A little later we'll put a pale pink or a pale blue in there and you'll see how that will change again. The goal is to cover the ground fabric keeping the rhythm of long and short, or long, depending on the context. Here it's getting a little tight because as you curve inwards, you're cutting off some of the paths.
see I'm coming towards the center so now the stitches start to become a little bit more upright because the central section actually is a fairly straight line. Now I'm going to start considering curving it back to the center. So here we're in the central section so the stitches are fairly straight. But when I start working the upper section I will consider a gradual movement now towards the center from the top. So see that last stitch was coming a little bit towards the center. Now it's the gentle curvature is towards the center as opposed to fanning out widely. The movements are all very subtle. See how that gently curves around the blue stitches? Do the work the outer edge. I'm going to angle my needle underneath that blue, see, and then bring the stitch back just slightly inside the design line. I will do another stitch coming at an angle from the bottom to the right side, hiding the start of that stitch and then curving in just inside the, the form. And now I'm going to fix the needle up from the back, jump over the fiber, and then cut that away. And that fixing will be secured by the stitches we're about to embroider. Now we're going to change color to the pale pink, and we'll fix in from the front to the back half a centimeter away, little fixing back stitch, and now we're ready to start stitching. On the line at an angle, hiding the beginning of that stitch, coming in just inside the design line. See how smooth that edge now is appearing? Now we're going to start putting the pale pink into the dark pink and you'll see how that will modify the color of the dark pink a little. It'll make it appear a little paler. Note also my starting points are always a little irregular so I don't create a ridge. If you bring if the starting point is at the same level all the time, you'll create a funny little ridge. And the whole idea about needle painting is that it has this wonderful fluidity. Going down even into the blue. Now coaxing it to curve a little bit towards the center. how deep I went there. It's really preparing the ground for the next level of stitches. But you can see we've lost the idea of a row. We're just painting now, basically putting color on the ground and enjoying the effect that our different color threads are creating. You can see a little bit of purple in there with a dark pink pale pink will mute that again. And in 
the central area now, so my stitches are fairly straight. Going towards my the end of the design. Taking care not to split this into the thread of the uh, previous row. And being really generous with the length of your stitches. If your stitches are, are too small, then everything gets very chubby looking and it loses the finesse. I'm working back up now, coaxing my stitches to come towards the center a little bit, ever so gently. Just enough movement to give the design a dimension. If we were doing all straight stitches it would be very static and the whole idea about needle painting is that you have movement. Now we're coming inside the design here and we're going to finish that exterior line with our pale pink. And now we're going right to the edge. Up again, finish off that line. And when you're reaching the exterior line or the last part of the design, it's really important to now consider doing short and long stitches to fill in the spaces that remain. So if you see, but not to put so many that it becomes lumpy. And that's the, that's the whole idea about needle painting, is to try to keep the regularity in all your stitches and the placement of the stitches. I'm going to the line and now I'm going to come back and do some smaller ones and fill in those spaces. There's a little space there right to the line. I'm going to place it very carefully. Now I'm going to do a short one here, fill in that little space. And I'm going to fix my thread. off the excess. Change of color, a little pale blue, starting the same way. You can see the space, I really have to go deep there. Still see a lot of fabric, so that needs to be painted. Watch how I curve that, that stitch around those previous. There you go. And that'll be my focus with this as we work towards this outer line. See how that curves a little bit? But I'm not masking the stitches underneath or in the previous area. That's really curved. I'm going to come up at the outer edge, try to nudge it underneath that pink stitch, come in and work ahead slightly into the design. And once again, going ahead. See how that curves? Because that curve is a little bit more accentuated, I've shortened up my, my, um, my stitches but still maintaining the idea of some long and some shorter. I undid that one, I, I reversed it. It's a bad thing to do, but I could see where I'd gone in, so I was able to bring my needle back up in the same spot. Yeah, I've made another mistake there, so I'm undoing it. It's not a good idea to do that. Better to undo the needle, thread, and re-thread it. There we go, I did a very small one to prepare my way.
you know when the stitch has been well placed because it it just merges into the rest it just has found its place and when you've practiced a little bit you'll discover there's a, gr a great deal of pleasure in working silently and regularly and rhythmically because your stitches somehow bind their place and when you have that feeling you know that you're working well but it does take a little time so please be patient with yourselves and just keep working at it and one day it will be like the veil has come off your eyes and it, you just do it automatically like anything just needs practice and confidence and be confident because you'll get there really in that central section where the stitches are very straight now we're getting close to the edge so some will go straight to the line now we're going to do a small one to cover to get to the line here so all those stitches now to finish at the outer edge will be going to the line until all the ground fabric has been covered but keep your rhythm and here, if you've been doing predominantly longer stitches in the body of the design, you'll now come back to the rhythm of long and short. These blue stitches are really curving up towards the center, but not to a point because all the edges are round, not pointed. So you just have to judge the curvature so that you maintain that soft curvature of that outer edge, even in the top section or the, the last piece of this design. See how short my stitches are now, but still maintaining the rhythm and still working from right to left or left to right. Almost finished. Hopefully I have enough thread in my needle to do these last stitches. I think I'll just make it. And then the finishing, when you have no more space in front of you because the design is complete. The technique now is to, here's the last stitch, and now we're going to fix. Oh, one more. One more little stitch there. Two more. Three more. There we go. Oh, one more. <laughs> one more. There we go. Now we're going to come up. There we go. There we go. I think I've finished now. There we go. Now we're going to finish. Bring it up right at the very, very edge of the design. at an angle and then slide it ever so carefully underneath those stitches. Take off the excess and then to, I'll just use my needle and there we go. Nudge the, uh, the thread a little bit more 
underneath. See the curve? It's very gentle, but that's what needle painting is all about. So thank you for joining me. It's Catherine signing off. If you have any questions, you can always email me at kbborel at gmail.com.